uniforms, wraps, COVID, and tours. <laughs> Today on Trekland Tuesdays Live, number 254. With me, Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, coming at you from the heart of Trekland through Portal 47 for the big picture clarity and sanity in all things Star Trek. Hey, we are back once again on Tuesday, sounding a little better than I did a week ago, hopefully. This week seemed like kind of a catch-all, seemed like kind of a catch-your-breath moment. Uh, yeah, and in case you missed it, wrap up. I'm just going to dive in, but I will say, if you are new to Trekland Tuesdays Live, a big fat welcome, big skinny welcome, whatever kind of welcome you would like. You've probably figured out that we've got chat rolling here. We've got a wonderful TTLers chat community. So jump in there, let yourself be known, or you can lurk. We have lurkers for a while too, because this is, this is kind of a grab bag is the other nice way to say it in case you missed it. Because I wanted to say and reinforce a couple things here. So this is a big miscellaneous random week. But hopefully not for you, because number one, there are ripples and echoes still coming down from Mission Chicago a week ago. Uh, a lot of the fun news is getting out on video. A lot of what was offered. I'm still putting out my videos and pictures. I've had uh, a live visit up with the folks at, at the Star Trek Wines. Stephen Brewer, which I thought was an interesting last name for somebody that worked with a wine. He, <laughs> he wasn't Stephen Vintner. He was Stephen Brewer. And uh, you should check that out too, this, the update on uh, Star Trek Wines. I've got more coming from fan sets and from the boot folks, uh, John Fluvog and um, or our friend uh, Frege at the new, the old and new Star Trek Unlimited. That's all coming on the pike. But one thing that flew by, aside from the historic first meeting of the Sid City Social Club in live action, was that Lower Decks panel. For once, Mike McMahon, if you haven't seen, we're mining some of his comments from the open house last fall, our, our free Portal 47 big annual event. Mike was the guest list. We were going to be putting some of those up finally up online. But for once, he was on a panel where he wasn't the star because it was live. Actors got to act. Yes, voice actors got to voice act. And did you see this? The stunt of all the Lower Decks people that were assembled. There were only four out of that at least eight plus cast. But the four on stage all wore Lower Decks uniforms. Now, it was cute. And I was about 15, 20 minutes into the thing when I thought, wait, wait, wait a minute. Has there ever been a time when a Star Trek cast wore their uniforms on stage at a con? Because that's another example of what protocol was and seemly. And also what, hey, uh, if I'm not getting paid extra for that, <laughs> basically it was a case of how inverted all this buffet of Star Trek is as soon as we added animation. Because look, live action actors, that's their work uniform. It's not just their pretend uniform. That's what they wear at work most of the time. These voice actors, you know, Tani and, and Jack Quaid and uh, Noel and then Jerry O'Connell, they barely see each other when they're recording, especially in a pandemic. But even as a matter of course, they don't see each other. Much less do something goofy that befits animation. They are not wearing a uniform 10, 12 hours a day while they're shooting live action. A completely inverted feeling expectation experience that the live action actors have to go through. So of course, for their debut, triumphant debut post-pandemic as a group together on stage, no little Zoom boxes separating them, of course... It's a huge stunt to wear their uniform. They look very classy, by the way. And then, of course, the 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 pulling out the Tom Paris plate for Boimler was a nice touch too. But it, I feel like that just flew by. And a couple of people said, "Oh, look, they're wearing the uniforms." Gang, <laughs> I think that was a first. Now we've had photo ops where characters individually got into makeup, especially the makeier uppier, the better. Uh, we've had guest stars. We've had one offs. We've had. Yeah, yeah, Bob and JG together, the Ferengi family together. But we, on a stage, didn't necessarily have to even be makeup. But wearing their uniforms, no big deal, for the 45 minutes. Um, because they wanted to. Because they got into it. And if you saw some of the video hijinks that were going on, you understood that too. So anyway, I just thought it was amazing. And I think the truth, the truth of the matter, the proof in the pudding was that uh, Mike 
Mac, uh, Mike McMahon didn't have to provide all the zingers for the 45 minutes for the whole panel. <laughs> That's kind of been on him lately and he enjoys it. But for once he got to give it up to his actors. So I just wanted to point that out. We had a panel with Star Trek actors wearing their uniforms for the whole panel at a big national con in mass. I just thought that was awesome. Uh, the other thing though, coming out of uh, Chicago was, and I don't know if you saw this, and now after yesterday, it's a very ironic timing. There was a mini, I don't want to say an outbreak. It was not a super spreader, but there was a mini COVID outbreak. I knew several people, heard from several people. People were posting some high profile folks, uh, fans, influencers, folks you would know. Trek Geek Dan, someone from the Women at Warp booth. Uh, my friend David from San Diego, all people who were fully vaxxed and were masking. Uh, one person I know never took a mask off all weekend and wound up testing positive. Now, so far, most people are looking mostly, from what I'm reading, mostly symptom-free or like bad cold-free. Now, I don't trust COVID to not pop up in 10 or 20 years with brain bleeds or some kind of clotting factor that we don't know now. We won't know for 10 or 15 or 20 years. So I don't blow it off like, oh, it's just another cold. And I know yesterday, not to delve into the real world of law and politics, but we had the mass mandate revoked, which I hate to see because we're watching this. Not that I want to live in a pandemic mask up world for the rest of my life. Of course I don't. But by the same token, I don't want to live in a mask of pandemic world the rest of my life. So anyway, it's like the little kids that scream and yell, when we get there, when we get there, and just make the damn trick more, <laughs> more of a pain, drag it out even longer in perception. So uh, I'm going to be going to Detroit, and I'm going to be masking on the plane, you betcha. Because I know of people who, over the weekend, or especially some in transit, who got their COVID while traveling, even under the protocols that we did have. It's that insidious. It may not be as, um, as severe as a disease and infection, but its stickiness is just uh, still unbelievable. So I'm not going to dwell on that, but I just want to say, I don't know if you heard that, but good on them. People were reporting that. And for people, a lot of people who are a lot of, our fan folks who were boothing and out and about and were very much in contact with others. And there are probably others who have come up since that I've, uh, that I uh, am omitting here, but it's still very much a factor. So you know what I'd say. The other thing I noticed that I just want to notice that no one has nothing to do with Chicago. It has to do with the calendar. We are in mid April and we know Star Trek. We live our anniversaries. It just struck me that, in contrast to that sad week at the end of January every year when NASA has Memorial Week and we remember the lost astronauts of Apollo 1, of the Challenger disaster, of the Columbia breakup, uh, on a different note, but in the same vein, just cheerier. Um, well, I think it's cheerier. It might be bittersweet. This is the time. I'm looking at my April calendar of anniversaries here. And you might say, yeah, this is... This is like rap party month, especially the finales. I've just got some notes here. On the 13th, it was the Enterprise finale rap party um, at the Hollywood Roosevelt, 2005, of course. Uh, this this week, this in two or three days on the 22nd, will be the anniversary of the DS9 rap party up at the Sky Bar at the Mondrian in on Sunset. <laughs> on the sunset curve uh, in Hollywood. That was 1999, of course. I just, uh, I've got some other rap parties to track. And of course there's a rap party every season. I'm talking these two, especially being the finales of their season. And it just, it just reminds me of a couple things. One, April, just as it is with say school terms and the junior senior prom and all of that graduation. Uh, April, a lot of times is a, is a time of endings. And it was that way for a lot of the Berman era shows. That gets me to realize later on that it used to be that way for TV in general. And another difference with now and then, I know the COVID is, <laughs> the pandemic has slowed things down, but even when we're 
in normal times, even in the old days, in the old times, oh, the old ones, um, it's like, it's like we're just, I mean, we're in, I, I'm not yelling on the lawn here. <laughs> I'm not screaming at the kids. It is what it is. But I, there's something about missing the time when TV was like clockwork and things ended, wrapped up in April, maybe May, restarted in June-ish, July-ish. Everyone took a hiatus and then we had the year to shoot. Now, a lot of people are not missing 26 episodes a year. A lot of audience aren't getting used to that. And a lot of folks who depended on their their uh, their industry credits to keep their health care going, all those kinds of things, however their savings and, and just how their work pattern went. On one hand, 10, 10 episodes, 12 episodes, 13 are a godsend. But on the other hand, that means you've, you've got to find twice as much work, which is why you see a lot of double dipping these days. People got to work all year long. They got to they, they got to get their income coming in. So it just struck me, though, one more time. I see this lineup of April finales and rap parties and realize that's a that's a lost era. <laughs> that is a done deal. Um, we won't have we will not look upon that like again unless we have a radical shift back in the formatting of TV. Um, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. That probably strikes no one the way it strikes me. But it's just, it's kind of like a little marker that is just a ripple effect. Hey, I said, in case you missed it, I said this is a grab bag of thoughts and ideas this week, okay? Uh, another shout out if you missed it, my good friend, buddy, and colleague, John Champion over at Mission Log and everything Roddenberry these days just celebrated his big 5 -0. We had a lovely party. Um, show him some love as, as the lineup of famous Star Trek birthdays keeps rolling along. I could even say today, happy birthday in absentia to Saul Kaplan, the composer of my favorite Star Trek soundtrack and theme for the Doomsday Machine, uh, who I eternally will feel bad for being ripped off by John Williams for Jaws. And also happy birthday to Herman Zimmerman today, right? We don't usually do big, big effort on birthdays, but since I've gone down that path, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Tomorrow is George Takei's birthday and many more too uh as well and noah's it's noah's so i'm getting you prepped and ready there but again this is not the birthday show there's plenty of folks out there to do that across the interwebs and um we try to bring you a little same old same old that's not same old same old so yeah there's just a random grab bag of things i did mention let's see what did i say in case you missed it uniforms wraps covid and tours this is a phenomenon that's gotten crazy. It's gotten so confusing for folks that I'm going to have to come up with a whole marketing campaign to keep this straight. But I just want everybody to remember that, yes, one of the cool things that we did do at Chicago, at Mission Chicago, was Terrace Cassidy at Geek Nation Tours and I announced the big tour, the 10-day Western U.S. away mission. The West Coast Away Mission, it's returned to our big multi-day Star Trek location tour that Geek Nation Tours operates and that I lead. It'll be in L.A. and San Francisco in July. I've got to get the links on my site, but I know if you go to geeknationtours.com, you will see the information there. It's being posted, but you want to get it on your calendar. It's the mid, mid part of July. I want to say it's the July 10th to the 20th of 2023. So plenty of time to plan, plenty of time to save up for it. Also on that calendar, though, much closer in is, you've seen me talk about it, Geek Nation Tours one day tour out the Valley of Fire that we've done so often. This is for folks who are coming to Vegas. Yes, it's Vegas Con Eve. This year, are you Wednesday, since the con starts on Thursday. It's only four days. Wednesday, August 24th. And again, you can go to geeknationtours.com. And check that out, too. The little rows of their tours they have up there. Not all Star Trek. You might see something else you enjoy and want to get into. Those are two. Also, also on the horizon is my two-day tour. Calling it the Great Birds Origin Tour. It's August 20, 21st. I need six. This is a much smaller scale, but it's two days. You can get a $100 off rate at the Hollywood Hotel, which is where we'll start each day. You don't have to stay there if you're local. In fact, I have, of the six people I need, two are local already. We're halfway there. We've got three folks lined up for this. 
Uh, it's two days of me. Rod is going to join us for part of the time talking about everything that made Gene what made him on all of his career and also his growing up, uh, his schools where he, where he grew up, where his dad at the LAPD besides himself, um, and of course studios and, and hangouts and that kind of thing. It's going to be really fun, really different, nothing ever before, never offered before. And I'm really looking forward to offering this. This is supposed to be a, a COVID year, supposed to be centennial year offering last year, and we had to bump it back a year. So, hey, it's the end of the centennial year, right? August 19th. So there's that. And then, yes, people are all over me about offering a tour for all the hordes coming in for the cruise next year, which is going to leave from L.A., not Florida. And so to take advantage of the situation, I'd already wanted to make sure everyone knew they could take a Trekline Treks tour, but I'm going to offer an LA Away Days prepackaged tour. At least one. We're going to see what the demand is. On the Thursday before Friday disembarkation. That's just next February. I'll have that up. I promise, I promise, as soon as possible. It's been heartening to see how many people who are the cruisers are all into that. So I'm going to work on that and get it up. A lot of people are coming extra days. They plan to anyway. So hopefully we can give them an experience like that. They'll they'll never have again until they come back for more. <laughs> or they take the big tour with us. So yes, it's as we open up out of COVID um, smartly, intelligently, but the things we can do, and especially as we look down the road, six, nine, 12 months, uh, it's exciting to think of all the things reopening. And as we look at what the new paradigm of these conventions is, what does Trek Vegas look like at Bally's? What is the mission uh, from Reed Pop? What does that format look like? Chicago now to be in Seattle and to be in May, which I think uh, actually Memorial Day weekend, end of May. So summer for a lot of folks. I think it'll be much better received that way for vacation. Seattle is not a city that a lot of folks have been to. I, however, love that convention center and love the downtown area. It'll be much more lively than the um, McCormick Center in Chicago. <sighs> have I grab bagged enough today? I can't wait to <laughs> jump into the chat and see what everybody's talking about. Maybe it'll be the topic I should have picked. But this week just felt like an in-between week, even with the goings on on Picard. Picard seems like it's treading water a little bit. And of course, everyone's waiting on Strange New Worlds. Will it be the great Trek hope that everyone's planning on? The expectation bar is pretty high. We'll see. We'll see. That was a hell of a panel they did at Chicago as well. And to see Henry Alonzo Myers, the showrunner, out front and center and taking a little, uh, a little camera time too. All right. Hey, that is going to do it for this week's soapbox. Not quite as vitriolic as some days, but uh, some weeks, but there you go. Uh, yeah. Just to remind you, too, that the people that I need to mention are our Patreons. A big thanks to all of them. Our TTL Club, Diana Hopkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, and marie Siegel, Keith Romback, Justin Porteous, Nathaniel Robinson, and Blaze K. And our TTL Live Wires, Rusty Harold, Halbert Gun Johnson, by the way. Thank you, Rusty. <laughs> the thing I could never have bought at the experience, but you made one anyway. Uh, thank you, Rusty. Thank you, Halbert Gun Johnson, Robert McLean, Alan Hoensey, J.R. Poole. It was good to meet you. Yes, in Chicago. Byron Bailey, Dave Gregory, you too. Gay Cleveland Lundstrom and Casey Shafsky. Great to see all of you. If you want to help out here with the live stream as we grow it bit by bit, five bucks, 10 bucks. That's all I ask. I don't have a big setup on patreon.com slash Trekland live. Love it. If you jump in, they collect that at the end of the month. So if you want to, you want to get in the uh, Patreon club uh, with the shout out and access to prior interviews from portal early days. Um, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Otherwise around the horn. Yes, of course there's a Trek files up already. Uh, John Champion and I dive into a memo from the early days of TNG that speaks to an issue that has never been resolved in Star Trek. And I'm going to let you figure out what it is. The Trek Files over at our Facebook page or wherever you catch your podcasts. But Trek Files Facebook is the only place you can get the documents of the week. We're the only podcast with paperwork, y'all. And all the Roddenberry podcasts at podcast.roddenberry.com. 
Facebook.com, I did have our big, there you go. Can you even get the QR code? Maybe so. Maybe someday I will lo load this up in the stills viewer again. There you go. July 8th to the 17th. Excuse me. I quoted wrong dates. It's Larry Nemechek on Twitter. Larry Nemechek's Trekland, as always, on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. And Facebook and Instagram. A lot of fun stuff happening on Instagram in Trekland. Of course, if you want to just jump in as we've got Euro 47, uh, the Euro ADT session tomorrow, um, portal47.net. Your minicon all year long. Even as maybe the virtual events go away as we return to live streaming or they diminish. Hey, we were live streaming. We were virtualing. We were Zooming and free conference calling in 2015. And that's how we have our global great group of portales with us. And some of them I know are in the chat today. That's going to do it for me right now. Aside to say we'll see you back here next Tuesday. I will be fresh from my experiences from PinguaCon Detroit. If you are in the Great Lakes region, come by. It's a wonderful, it's small, but it's not tiny at all. Look it up, Pingu PinguaCon. I think it's .com. If not, it'll be PinguaCon.org. There's a whole maker segment. They do things just a little bit differently, but it's still a convention. I will be there with some other great non-celebrity guests. But fun folks, fun people, and a con with a history. They've been going, what, 20 years? I can't wait to get up in that neck of the woods and see what a fan con looks like, especially one that's a sci-fi and makers mashup. So check it out. Maybe I will see you there. If not, I will be back here next Tuesday to talk about that and whatever else is going on in Trekland. And as I bid adieu for this part of the show, if you are watching us later on YouTube, you should watch live sometime because there's a lot more of the show. <laughs> Otherwise, for now, stay healthy. Do all the things your gut tells you to do. Stay woke. Check the sources of what it is you're reading. And trek well, everybody. <laughs>